Hello everyone, my name is Dan with Terrain Control Systems and in this video we will be covering momentum modes. We all may be familiar with momentum in the real world, but what does momentum mean for modelers? As Isaac Newton once said, an object in motion tends to stay in motion, while an object at rest tends to stay at rest. This is the first law of Newtonian physics. With a real life train, the mass, and therefore the momentum, is much greater than it is on a scale replica, and obviously takes much longer to come to a stop. Momentum is a feature which allows the decoder to gradually increase or decrease the voltage applied to the motor in a locomotive in an effort to simulate the acceleration and deceleration characteristics of its real-life counterpart. To simplify, you can program a decoder to slowly change speeds rather than instantaneously in order to replicate the prototype. TCS WOW sound decoders have momentum values programmed by default, whereas mobile decoders do not have momentum by default. Momentum is controlled by adjusting the values in CV3 and CV4. Values between 1 and 255 are accepted. The larger the value used, the longer it will take for the locomotive to change speed. CV3 is used to set the rate of acceleration, while CV4 is used to set the rate of deceleration. To simulate even heavier trains when using consisted locomotives, CV23, which is the consist acceleration, and CV24, which is the consist deceleration, can be used to modify the amount of momentum when running an advanced consist. The value you set will affect the normal momentum values when a value other than zero is in CV19, the consist address. It is important to realize that momentum only affects the rate at which the speed is achieved, not the speed itself. Changes to momentum will not affect the minimum or maximum speed or any speed tables you may have configured. TCS WOW sound decoders have two momentum modes which may be toggled on the fly. These modes are called mainline and switching. By default, button 15 on a WOW sound decoder will toggle between these two modes. However, you may remap this function to any button using audio assist. You may customize both momentum modes as values as well. For mainline mode, you may change the values in CV3 and CV4, but for switching mode, you must perform 4 CV programming. Mainline mode is the default mode a WOW sound decoder ships with, and has a moderate value for acceleration and deceleration. This mode is intended for use on long tracks and layouts, where the need to stop and change directions is not commonly required. Mainline mode provides a prototypical response to throttle changes, and simulates the weight of a true scale locomotive. Mainline mode is intended to be used in conjunction with TCS's braking feature in order to provide a realistic experience. When your throttle is turned to zero, you will notice that the locomotive does not stop. If you want to stop faster than the deceleration rate alone, simply push your brake button to bring the train to a stop faster. Switching mode is the secondary mode of a WOW sound decoder and has a very low value for acceleration and deceleration. This mode is intended for use on short tracks and layouts where the need to stop and change direction is commonly required. An example of this would be in a switching yard. Switching mode provides an instantaneous response to throttle changes and will behave much like a DC locomotive or a slot car. When in switching momentum, your locomotive will behave as if it were in traditional throttle mode. Similar to TCS's manual notching feature, momentum may be changed at a single button press. What this means is that you don't have to go into audio assist to change your throttle modes. Instead, you can simply switch momentum modes with a single button. Unlike traditional throttle mode, however, your chuff intensity or prime mover notch are not affected by momentum. Momentum mode switching is available in all throttle modes, so your sounds will act accordingly with your throttle mode. When in switching mode, you are not expected or required to use the brakes. Imagine, if you will, a locomotive in a yard. This locomotive has some cars it needs to rearrange in the yard before it can hook up for the last time and depart. You may find that working in a yard can be rather arduous when mainline momentum is enabled. So instead, change to switching momentum and organize your cars. Once you are ready to depart with your load, change back to mainline momentum mode and slowly pull your heavy cargo out onto the main. As a demonstration of the difference between mainline and switching momentum, we have here a short section of straight track what we're going to do is we're going to accelerate this locomotive to speed step 40 of 128 from zero and then zero the throttle. We will see how long it takes to reach that speed as well as how long it takes to stop. For this demonstration I will not be using the brakes. This locomotive is also using the default momentum values from TCS. Alright, let's get going. There we're up to speed, so I'll slow it down. 
Uh oh, looks like we're gonna run out of track. <laughs> so you can see there that this locomotive obviously took quite a while to get up to speed. Now, by comparison, we can take this and put it back on the track and then put it into switching mode. Now, let's make a comparison to switching momentum. Now, I'm going to switch to switching momentum and then accelerate the train to 40 out of 128 and then back to zero. So we'll switch it over. Switching momentum. And accelerate to speed step 40. And there we're up to speed and back to zero. I'm sure you can see the difference there. In this case, the locomotive came up to speed immediately and stopped on a dime. For users looking to get an even more finely tuned momentum curve, an additional advanced feature is available in TCS decoders called variable momentum. As you can see from this diagram, variable momentum has five CVs for both acceleration and deceleration, which sets up to three momentum rates for each. Each of the six rates may be individually tweaked, as well as the four breakpoints. Implementing variable momentum is as simple as programming a value between 1 and 255 into all of the CVs outlined here. As an example, let's imagine I have a layout with a 4x8 sheet of plywood. The amount of track I have to operate on in this case is very limited in most cases. So if I want the locomotive to come to a stop in a reasonable distance, my momentum would need to be low, right? That's true. But with variable momentum, I can set multiple momentum values to be active based on the speed of the locomotive. Ergo, I can rapidly decelerate from my top speed to a low speed, but then crawl to a complete stop from there. Similarly, I can crawl out of a station, but then rapidly accelerate to a cruising speed on the main. Each breakpoint is customizable, and each of the momentum values may be different. You don't need to follow a parabolic curve if you don't want to. Thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, then be sure to leave it a like and comment down below with what you'd like to see next from TCS. If you want to stay up to date on the latest news and tutorials from TCS, go ahead and push that subscribe button. Happy modeling! Thank you for watching! If you enjoyed this video, be sure to share it with your train-loving friends. What would you like to see next from TCS? Let us know in the comments. Happy modeling!